right, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter 1. This is a message that uh, I hope the Lord will use. You know, I, I, I just sat there thinking, you know, um, maybe I ought to preach a sermon on why you ought to come back to sat- Sunday night and preach it on Sunday morning. Um, and then the next Sunday morning, preach on why you ought to make it to Wednesday Bible study. Uh, and not being sarcastic, but truly, what are the reason why? Now, to me, the reason why you ought to come back is because uh, you're not going to go anywhere else throughout the rest of your week where they're going to open up the Word of God and teach and preach from it. Um, and you ought to just show up because it's the right thing to do. Now, that's not everybody else. Some people need to be convinced, you know. Some people need to be strong-armed, uh, con- uh, convinced, you know. Um, but... Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to use it sarcastically in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but folks, they ought, to, they ought to make it that way. I've been to restaurants before where the meal wasn't so great, but they brought out dessert, and that was all worth it. You know, I've been places before where, you know, you get halfway through something, and you're like, ah, oh, this isn't, ah. Because I'm telling you right now, some days I feel like um, uh, I popped out in, in, uh, in, in, in the infield, and I, I swung and missed. Uh, not every Sunday morning is a home run sermon. Sometimes I'm like, I struck out. <laughs> that was not great. Now, the Holy Spirit might have used it some way. The Holy Spirit can take some lame old sermon and do, <laughs> do something with it. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Uh, but um, there's times you get to bat again. And, and if you show up to the plate and you show up uh, to the dinner table, sometimes you're fed. And uh, people who walk out, they don't come to Sunday school. They come to one service at the 11 a.m., and they don't come back Wednesday or Sunday night. Uh, I just wonder how people can stay fed that way. I just don't understand how Christians can do that. Uh, but um, I'll, I'll come up with a sermon and, and preach a biblical sermon on why you should come back to church on Sunday night. Uh, all right, now, uh, let's see. You all are like, Brother Jackson, we're here. Why are you telling us? Um, I'm just venting to you. Just sharing with you. Uh, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 6, it says, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting on of my hands. Uh, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel According to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I do suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know who I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And lastly, verse 13, Hold fast, Paul speaking to Timothy, Hold fast that form of sound, of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you'd help me tonight. Help me as I preach. Uh, Lord, help me not to, uh, uh, the, the, the folks who aren't here, uh, Lord, they'll miss out on a blessing. They'll miss out on an encouragement. They'll miss out on being stirred up. Uh, Heavenly Father, help me not to ever be discouraged by the numbers. Because uh, Scripture says where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst. Now, our Lord, I like two or three hundred or two or three thousand. Uh, but Lord, you, are, uh, you can do something with, t- you've shown it time and again what you did with Guinea. You don't need 30,000. You don't need 20,000. Uh, Lord, you could use two or three. Uh, Heavenly Father, you're a God of miracles, as I spoke this morning. Uh, and the things you did in old, you can do again. Lord, help us again tonight. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I like verse number six. Verse number six is my text verse. He says, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. I like being stirred up. 
I like whether it's um, anger, and, and I mean a righteous anger. Uh, but I, um, I like comfort. I like relaxation. I like chilling out and hanging out. You know, I, I, I like being a mellow fellow. Uh, but there are some things that just get me pumped up. There's some things that just, that just get me riled up. And what's hap- what is that? That's a stirring up. That's a stirring up of a certain emotion, a certain feeling. But Paul says to Timothy here, he says, stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. So many Christians have a gift that is gathering dust. It's gathering dust, uh, and it's not being used. He said, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by putting on of my hands. Now Paul is writing to young Timothy. Timothy's a young preacher. He's saying, Timothy, you've been saved. Timothy, you have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling in you. Um, uh, Timothy, God called you into his service. And Timothy, I placed my hands on you as it was a, like an ordination of God, a token of God's call. Now, Timothy, stir yourself up and do what God asks you to do. Do what God asks you to do. What here is a, is, is a picture of, of um, I believe uh, Paul was an independent Baptist is what I believe. I believe he was, um, he was probably about as fundamental as you could get. Uh, Paul was a, 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 an independent fundamental Baptist, uh, and he's writing to a young independent fundamental Baptist named Timothy. Uh, by the way, they weren't Catholic, they weren't Mormon, they weren't Jehovah's Witness, they weren't Muslim, um, they weren't, um, I don't believe they were free will Baptist, uh, they weren't American Baptist, they weren't National Baptist, they weren't regular Baptist, they weren't Reformed Baptist, they were independent Baptists. Amen. Thank you for that. Uh, independent Baptist. Now, uh, Paul was saying, now I don't know if I'm speaking to a bunch of Catholics tonight. Y'all got your, 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 um, your, your Sunday lunch and you're all waking up out of your nap right now. Uh, Lucas, Houston, wake up. Did you know it's okay to, amen? You know what I want you guys to do? I want you to lie to me. Fake me out. Even if you don't understand what I just said, say amen, okay? Okay, thank you, Brother Pip. Lead the way. If they, say don't, if they don't say amen, just pop them in the back of their head for me, okay? All right. Now, uh, Paul, he's, what he's seeking to do is, yeah, he's seeking to stir somebody up. He's saying, Timothy, get stoked. Get, get stirred up. First and second Timothy, he kept telling Timothy, he said, endure hardship like a good soldier. Endure hardship like a good soldier. See, I've preached on that. Hey, hardship's coming. Endure it like a good soldier. Trench warfare and, and the, the hardships of war and the things of war that you'll see. Endure it like a good uh, a soldier. And then he also says, study. Study. I took um, several weeks in, uh, uh, on a Wednesday, excuse me, several weeks on a Wednesday and talked about study to show thyself approved. Study, study, study to show thyself approved. So he tells him, uh, endure hardship and study to show thyself approved. What, what was Paul doing for Timothy here? What is he doing? He's saying the very thing we have to do is, is and a big thing that we don't do, is stir people up. Stir people up. That's why I like a preacher that says edgy things. That's why I like it when somebody says it the way it's supposed to be. That's why I like it because it stirs people up. It moves people. It, it rubs you the wrong way, not in a mean way, but to get people to move, to get people to do something, some sort of action. See, if I'm going to stand up here and preach and never, nobody ever walks the aisle and nobody ever says amen and nobody has ever moved to action in their spiritual life, then I should stop preaching because the power... Because the power of God, amen? Because the power of God does not dwell on me. It doesn't dwell on me. It was funny. My dad and I were talking. I said, how do you get the power of God? What do you do to get the power of God? He said, well, live clean and be obedient. Live clean and, live ob- and be obedient. So I'm on the phone with uh, a pastor in Oklahoma City. And I said, hey, let me ask you something. He said, what? I said, what do you do to get the power? What do you do to get the power of God? He says, live clean and obey the Bible. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm like, What? I said, that's exactly what my father told me. And he said, it's biblical. He said, you want the power of God on you? And he added some things. He said, live by faith. He said, find find out what stirs the Holy Spirit, what excites the Holy Spirit, and then do those things. Because the Holy Spirit of God lives in me and dwells in me. And the Holy Spirit of God wants to be stirred. God wants to see his people doing uh, uh, things by faith, and that excites him. That excites him. And that's what Paul was doing for Timothy. 
Paul was doing this uh, all, uh, all, at all kinds of times. He wrote a letter to the Christians at Rome and at Corinth and at Philippi and at Ephesus in the same manner to stir them, to move them, to shake them. And that's what we need today. But th- thank you. For, uh, I'm going to say thank you every time. But, but uh, you remember what Brother Watts? Brother Watts would say, um, you know, God is good, amen. And he's good all the time, amen. And he's coming back again one day, amen. And he's going to come back. And you're like, brother, amen, Brother Watts. We <laughs> My man would amen himself. Uh, but uh, people don't want to be shaken. What, what, what happens with most people, especially in America, is we want to stay still. We want to stay still. We don't want uh, 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 things to, to shake us and to move us. We want to find our lane and stay in it. Uh, we want to come to church on Sunday morning, listen for an hour, get up, walk out the door, go home, eat lunch, take our Baptist nap, forget about what the preacher said, then come back Sunday night, maybe. Listen for another hour, walk out the doors, forget about what the preacher said, and go about our merry old way. Folks don't want to be stirred. They don't want to be. But folks, but to do what God asks us to do, we must be a stirred people. We must be a people who want to be moved, who are willing to be moved. Moses had it in his mind when he said, beware, beware, lest thou forget the Lord. Beware, lest thou forget the Lord. What was he doing? He was stirring the people up, and we have to do the same. We've got to do the same. And I know that I have um, uh, folks in my church, uh, many folks in my church who are older, and, uh, uh, but if you're still breathing, you can still be stirred. You can still be stirred. I'm not trying to get anything out of you that's for me. I want to get anything. I want to get every drop, every ounce, every, every uh, uh, motive, every moment that I can out of you for the Lord. That's what I want. I know you can't do everything that you used to do, but you might be able to do something different. You might be able to do something uh, in, in another capacity. So today, today uh, we Christians, we fundamentalists, we independents need to be stirred up. We need to be stirred up. Um, all around us, there are all kinds of powerless leaders and powerless pastors and powerless missionaries and powerless teachers without the Holy Spirit, without Holy Spirit power. I want Holy Spirit power. I want it. I want it. I don't want to get up here and play, uh, uh, play preacher for the next 25 years. No, no thank you. I don't want to do that. If I'm going to do it, I want to do it. I want to do it right, and I want God to be involved in it. I don't want to be one of the churches that you hear closes its doors. I don't mean want to be one of the churches that you hear about that said that that uh, uh, somebody had heard about it years ago and they come into town and find out that it's a uh, there, there there are um, tumbleweeds rolling through the parking lot and uh, there's a bunch of uh, quiet mouse saints sitting in the back of the auditorium while a pastor who who draws enough of a paycheck to be happy gets up here and is okay with his 25 member crowd or his 50 member crowd. Folks, if we can fit 210 in here, then we ought to see, then we ought to have 210. Amen. If we can fit 300 in here, then we ought to fit 300 in here. And I'm not, I don't mean it, you know, pack them on the aisles. And, but if people, if there are pews that can be in seats that can be sat in, then people ought to be sitting in them. And I'm going to do anything and everything in my, in my power, in my ability, through Holy Spirit power and through knowledge and through work to get it done. I do everything I can. I told Brother Alex yesterday, I said, could you imagine what it would be like to try to knock a thousand doors? Or let's say, let's say, 700 doors, 800 doors a month. If you Come on now, a church couldn't help but grow. God couldn't help but bless people. And, and, I, and I mean particularly the pastor who got up every morning, he read his Bible and he prayed and he had his coffee and he fellowshiped with his family and said, okay, off to school you go. And his day was planned. His day said, okay, my, I'm gonna go make a couple hospital visits, but I got a neighborhood I'm gonna go knock for five hours. God couldn't do anything or w- God wouldn't do anything besides bless that man and bless that church through souls and through people and through baptisms. Folks, I, I need to move on. But God God will bless a people who are seeking his power. Amen. Folks, we just read it in Matthew in, in Matthew this morning where he said, whatsoever things you ask of me, I, I'll give it to you. If you ask believing, folks, I'm not asking, I'm not asking for stuff. I'm asking for power. Solomon asked for wisdom and he got it. God sent the Holy Spirit down here. He's here in the world today. I know that he's living. He's right here inside of me today, and I know that I can have his power, and so can you, and so can our church. So can our church. You know, I see things in people, and not that I'm some visionary, but I see people, and I see things in people, and I say, man, they've got great potential to do thus and so. 
and they don't see it in themselves. And I tell them that and they just kind of look at me and scoff. Oh, no, I could never do that. Yeah, you could. If you would take your little lunch and give it to the Lord, he could take something and multiply it with. He could do something great with it. But if you don't ever give that bread, if you don't ever give that fish, if you don't give that little lunch of yours to the Lord, he's got nothing to feed anybody with. We want the world to be changed, but we won't give the Lord what we have. We want our community to be helped and reached and changed, but we won't give what we have. Here am I, Lord, send someone else. Yeah, Lord, I'm here and I'm available, but I'm not willing. If we would just really be honest with ourselves and dare to look inward. Uh, but po people don't want to be, they don't want to be stirred and pastors don't want to stir. As long as a pastor is drawing enough of a paycheck from a church that somebody else stirred a long time ago and got them to a position, and that pastor's dead and gone now, and they, some other guy came and filled the pulpit, and they pay him, pay him a salary and give him a housing allowance and a car allowance, and his kids go to the school, and they kind of run the show there, and, 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 and he kind of just maintains things. He doesn't want to stir it. He doesn't want to step on the tither's toes. He doesn't want to make people mad. He doesn't, oh, no, I don't want to. I, I want to just keep my spot here. We need powerful preachers and powerful teachers and powerful mothers and fathers and powerful people to preach. And preach just means to proclaim. That's all it means. The truth. The truth. You can go across America today and go into all kinds of churches that are powerless. Powerless. And I don't mean by number, but I mean you walk in there, you know it's dead. I went into a church in Texas while I was working down there. And uh, there's a somewhat of a, a, a big name preacher. And I went in there and I felt like that place was dead. The whole balcony was shut off. Lights were off. Everybody's on the lower level. Uh, and this is pre-pandemic. This is 2018. And I went in there. The bottom half wasn't completely filled. Good number, but not completely filled. No buses. Didn't run any buses. Had a parking garage. Had a nice parking lot, had a couple of nice, like, um, uh, upgraded vans. Uh, and big name pastor wasn't there. He was preaching somewhere else. But and, and the guy that came in, man, he gave it all he had, but it was crickets. It was dry. Not one person came up and shook my hand. Not one person came up and said hello. Not a visitor's card. I mean, I don't even know if anybody looked at me. There was a weird guy across. He kept looking at me. But I, uh, there was a, uh, <laughs> uh, they, they, they look, you know, I, I just, it felt dry, dead and cold and dim. Thought, man, I thought this was like, this is so-and-so's church. And it was, if I gave it a Yelp review, it would be like a 1.4. Uh, you're like, what's a Yelp? Okay, here you go, a Google review. A Google review would be like a 1.5. It was not nice facilities, uh, and the people weren't rude, but they weren't kind either. Um, and there's churches all across our country like that. I don't want that to be us. I don't want that ever to be us. I, I don't believe we can close the casket on Three Years Baptist Church. I don't believe we can do it. I don't, I don't believe it's possible because you don't close, for us, you don't close a, a, a casket on somebody who's still breathing. We're still breathing, and there's evidence of it. There's evidence, but we've got a whole lot of room to improve, lots of room to improve and to grow again and grow. Now, the thing is, is that what, what we have to do as a church is we have to face the fact of a very much forgotten Great Commission. There are folks even that go to this church who used to be soul winners and they're not anymore. You used to carry tracks with you and you don't do it anymore. If Brother Bachman can call people on the phone and lead people to the Lord, so can you. So can you. I know that's stirring the pot, but the Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Folks, we've not done it. We're not doing it. We've not yet done it. Man, we were on a great, we were on a great track to do it. I mean, I know that we have surpassed 70,000 public prof or, uh, professions of Christ. I know that we, as a, as a church, we're past 70, I think, believe past 75,000. 75,000 people who have said, Yes, I want to trust Christ as my Savior. I believe on Jesus to save me. I ask him to save me. 75,000. Hey, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, but um, uh, and I make no excuses. I can say the devil has attacked us and we've had a drop-off and COVID and all. What, 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 no excuses. The Bible hasn't changed. The gospel hasn't changed. The commissions haven't changed. And here's the great thing. And this is not a scolding because I am... 
this is not me telling you. This is me telling us. I am part of us. I'm just, if anybody's, you know, there's no blame, but if anybody's going to carry the, if anybody's mugshot's going to be up there, it's mine because everything rises and falls on leadership. That's right. Amen that. In case one of you ever become a leader of something, it's, it's, it, I say it because it sounds so mean. It's, it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility. And then here's what a great leader does. A great leader owns the loss and distributes the win. You say, what does that mean? That means when a quarterback has a bad game, he gets up there and says, it was my fault. I did it. And when there's a win, he says, man, the line did a great job project, protecting me today, and the running back hit the holes, and the wide receivers ran sharp routes. And it's the same thing for a pastor. Same thing for a pastor. Because I am the one who is supposed to be interceding for our church. I am the one supplicating and interceding and asking for power for our church and leading our church. But at the same time, I can turn around and go to God and say, yo, hey, God, you got to lead. God, you lead and I'll follow. And these people have said, I'll follow if you lead. That's what they did when they voted me in. So God, you've got to lead and God will lead. God will lead. As I said it this morning, he, 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 he'll, do in the, uh, uh, he'll do today what he did in the old days. He, he, and, he keeps, and he continues to do miracles. And God still does it. God still does it. There are all kinds of thousands and thousands of churches. Nobody saved, nobody baptized last year. I don't, we didn't have as many as I'd like, but man, we had, that's the heartbeat of a, of a church. A real New Testament church is people getting saved, people getting baptized. Salvations and baptisms, salvations and baptisms. Now there's all kinds of, uh, I could just monologue this whole thing, but I don't want to. I do want to be, I, I want to be, I don't want to be brief because I, this, I look forward to Sunday because I like doing this. I, the, the pressure of preparing is always hard. How do I say it? What do I do? How do I write it down? Most of the time, um, it's just like one or two word sentences written down on a three by five card, one, two, three, that put me on track to think a certain way. Um, uh, Dr. Harriton and my father and um, uh, uh, transcripts from uh, Brother, uh, uh, Brother Pohazi's um, college days and things that I've taken over the years and Google how to write an outline, <laughs> those have been a great help to me. I've never been trained how to write an outline. You know, I didn't go to college to learn all that stuff. I'm not classically trained. I am, oh, dear God, help me trained. Dear God, help me know what to say to be trained. God, help me. I think, excuse me, there are three things, three things that, need, that, that have areas that need to stir, three areas in which we need stirred. Number one, we need it to be stirred to repentance. I preached on this. Hey, hey, Kevin. Kevin. Hey, shake him, man. I don't want no snoring. Wake him up. Hey, hey, wake up, bub. Wake up. Yeah, I agree. I just don't. No, I know he wouldn't. I, I know he wasn't. And I haven't seen him in a long time, so it's all good. All right, all right. Number one, stir us to repentance. I'm try, I, I, I was being kind. I wasn't being mean. Um, uh, the Bible says, um, uh, now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed, get this, sorrow to repentance. Sorrow to repentance, for ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage, or that ye, yeah, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Folks, you can be sorry and be sorry the right way. Be sorry the right way. We need to repent. Get this. A lot of people say, I have repented of my wrongdoing. Yes, but have you repented of your doing nothing? Brother Hiles preached a message years ago, some, many years ago, I think maybe before I was even born. Um, and I thought, man, that is, that's, what a great message that is. And it was called sitting by. Sitting by. And he, was, he addressed people that were in his congregation for years and said, you've been here for years and you've done nothing. What have you done? What have you done? And I'm not trying to be mean to you. He said, and he said, you know that I love you. I've counseled you. I've done many of your weddings, your children. I've baptized them and, and all these things. He said, but what have you done for the Lord? You've sat by. Folks, we, more than church attendance and putting your, your 10 in the, putting your 10% in the plate and, and shaking the preacher's hand, walking out. There's more to be done. 
You say, well, how can I get involved? Soul winning. How can I get involved? Soul winning. I don't need, I have repented of my wrongdoing, but have you repented of doing nothing? We put a lot of emphasis on, a lot of emphasis on things. Uh, but we're not putting, I don't think, uh, many churches, and sometimes, uh, I, I know that we've always tried to, to do it and to keep it up, but uh, uh, we're not putting enough emphasize, emphasis on the things of God. What exactly does God want? Salvation of souls, winning people to the Lord, baptisms, disciples. Instead, we have, uh, we have uh, we've thought of money. we thought of possessions. we thought of new homes and new buildings and we thought of all kinds of different things, but Christians need to be um, stirred to repentance. It's my job to get up and preach on sin. It's my job to get up and preach on separation. It's my job to stand up and tell you, hey, thus saith the Lord. This is what God has to say. And if you have any type of heart in you that is right with God, any, any attachment to him at all, you go, oh, wait, that's what God wanted? And you'll be stirred to repentance. This means we should have the mind of Christ. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians 2, 5. It means, it means to see our personal failures, our personal faults, our personal failures, and how, how, uh, how short and how sorely we failed in living for him. I can do better. We can do better. We can do better. Um, I don't do New Year's resolutions. I, I just... Miss Sarah said, I don't do New Year's, resolution, New Year's resolutions. I like me how I am. Uh, I'm like, all right, yeah, I got that. But I, my New Year's resolutions, resolutions aren't to lose weight or to lift weights or to go see the Grand Canyon. It's I want to see people saved and baptized. That's my New Year's resolution. It's, it stirs me. It stirs me not to see the water stirred. It stirs me not to see people saved. It, it bothers me. And many times I... I, I, I don't see, sometimes I don't see people saved or, or whatever the case may be, and I go, but I am discouraged. I'm discouraged, and, uh, but it still stirs me. It stirs me to want to do better. It stirs me to examine my life and go, is there something in the way that blocked me, for, that blocked the Holy Spirit from using me? Did I tie the hands of, of the Holy Spirit in working in my life because I had unconfessed sin, because I had something that I didn't get out of the way, because I'm regarding iniquity in my heart? Dear God, use me. Oh, God, would you use me? Dear God, please give us power. That's what I want. Most Christians, folks, they've never seen, they've never led a Christian to Christ. They've never led a person to Christ. I don't want to embarrass anybody in here, but your Sunday night crowd, usually they're the ones that have. But if this morning I was to ask people who all has led anybody to the Lord, I think maybe half the people in our church could say that they have. But back when we were running, what, 320? Our, that, that percentage would have went down because the numbers were up. What we have remained, we, we've had um, um, some old-time soul winners remain, Brother Kevin, Brother Pitt, Miss White, um, not, not old-timers, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> And many others who, who, have, <laughs> who have stuck around through the years, you've been soul winners throughout the years, and, and that is commendable. But most people go to church, they've never led anybody to the Lord. I want our, I want, like everybody, I mean, couldn't, wouldn't that be something? If everybody who came to Thurier's Baptist Church was a soul winner? <laughs> Lucas and Houston would be soul winners this year. I mean, they're going to get after it. They're going, to see their, they're going to see some people saved this year. They're going to see visitors this year. I asked Houston, what, would you, what do you want to do this year? He said, I want to eat healthier. I said, okay. He said, I want to make some things out of wood. I said, all right, cool. Uh, and what was the other thing? Shoot a gun. I want to shoot a gun. I was like, all right, cool. I, we can do all those things. And as we were driving to go pick up Bill this morning, I thought, he doesn't know it yet, but he's going to see somebody saved this year. I'll set it up. He can knock it down. Uh, uh, but to see people saved, see people saved. I, God has got to move our hearts to repentance through preaching, through fellowship, through prayer. I, I hope that you pray in here. Some people call their Wednesday Bible study or their Wednesday meetings worship meetings, prayer meetings, Bible studies. Uh, but I know that God's people need to be a people of prayer, of prayer. And during your prayer time is a fantastic time to 
confess and repent. I talked to Brother Alex yesterday. I said, you know, we got the, you've got um, praise and thanksgiving and um, uh, confession and supplication and intercession, or however you want to do it. Um, but you know, I can never do, I can't, I can't always fit five in. Sometimes I can't fit all those subjects in one prayer time. Sometimes it's like, I'll give him praise and thanks. I always try to get the praise and the thanks in because if I feel like it's a buffer from what I'm about to tell you, Lord. And he's like, don't worry, Jackson, I already know. I already know, Jake. Uh, and I go to the Lord and I confess my sin. And I'll spend time just saying I'm sorry because I feel like three minutes or five minutes in confession isn't enough. I don't feel like I got it all out. I don't feel like I am, yes, I confessed it. Yes, I know the Lord knows about it, but I need to know for my sake, for me, I know the Lord knows, but I want to know that I, man, I poured it all out. I gave it, I didn't just say, dear Lord, please forgive me of the thing that I thought or the thing that I know that was wrong. And, you know, some measly little forgive me. No, but a real honest to goodness confession of sin and saying, God, I know it's wrong and I know my sins hung the Savior on the tree and God, I know that when I sin, I sin against you and you only and Lord, I don't mean to, but it's this flesh and oh God, would you help me? Oh God, would you forgive me? God, give me the victory over my sin. God, I don't wanna do it anymore. God, I know that I'm going to again at some point, but would you give me the victory over it? Lord, I, I, I don't wanna wrestle with this anymore. I'd rather move on to a new sin and fight a new sin than struggle with this old sin. And you and these desperate prayers that we pray in confession, don't you go, dear God, I would rather have this problem than the one that I have now until you have that problem. But I want to know the Lord has got to know that we're serious about our repentance. Serious about it. Repent, confess and forsake and turn to the Lord. We need to be stirred up about repentance. Number two, we've got to be stirred up again about the basics. Three Years Baptist Church doesn't need to do anything new. We don't need to do anything new. We can just take the old basics and the only thing new that we're gonna add to Three Years Baptist Church is like technology and make life a little bit more streamlined. Soul winning still works. Bus visitation still works. Visiting your Sunday school class still works. Going and visiting the absentees still works. Personal contact works, writing letters works, emails, all those things, they all work. But adding technology in, man, it just makes it better, makes it more effective. I, I mean, there may be a, like a new department here or there. I mean, Three Rivers Baptist Church is not moving away from basics. But there's no sense in moving on to something new if we're not going to be stirred up about the basics. The basics of the Bible. The basics of the Bible. The basics of our fundamentalism. The basics of our faith. Folks, um, I keep telling myself and, and telling others um, uh, and, and other folks that I've talked to, uh, most people, the most percentages of people, they have not even read their Bible through in a year, let alone, let alone led somebody to the Lord. Read your Bible through. I've been in, in church meetings. I've been in Sunday schools where I'm the only one with a Bible. That should never, ever be. The Bible's, it's like the playbook. You don't show up to the facility player without your playbook. You don't show up without your playbook. I know in um, certain um, uh, situations of the military, once you have a rifle, that rifle goes everywhere with you. You, you do not, you, that weapon goes everywhere with you. You know it inside and out. You can take it apart and put it together with your eyes closed. That's a party. Uh, uh, same thing with, I, I know there's all kinds of uh, military, um, uh, 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 military uh, do's and don'ts uh, that you're supposed to do, you have to do, and you must not do, and you should never do. Well, folks, for the Christian, the, this right here is it. This right here is it. It's not about this tie. It's not about a hanky. It's not about a pulpit. It's not about the pews. It's not about even the building that we're meeting in today. It's this. How are you going to show up and, and, and show up to war without your weapon? How are you going to show up to, the, to the, um, the film room without your playbook? 
How are you going to do that? How are you going to show up with that? You can't do that. You shouldn't do that. You'd be, you'd be, uh, uh, man, run laps, run suicides. You'd be trying to borrow somebody else's. Hey, man, you got one, you got an extra. You'd be going to the coach who you were cool with and being like, hey, man, you got an extra playbook in there. Actually, do me a solid. You would not let the coach see you without your playbook. Now, the pastor, he's got to be all lovey dovey. Folks, bring your Bible to church. Bring your Bible to church. Open it when the pastor says open. You don't have a Bible, we'll get you one. When the, when the pastor says open up to such a book, open there. When the pastor says look at a verse, look there. Look there. It ought to go everywhere you go. Every time you go to, the, uh, go to church, you ought to have your Bible with you. Every time. Every time. I got yelled at in, time, in, in church one time for not having my Bible. Since then, I've got one in my, in my semi-truck. I've got one, uh, a, a Bible or a New Testament. I have uh, several in my office, several in my room. I have, I have them everywhere. We got, I got Bibles everywhere. I think I have like 11 Bibles. So I'm not going anywhere without my Bible. I need my Bible. <laughs> got to take it with me. I have to take it with me. Just like this knife right here, this little pocket knife of mine. Every morning I get up, this pocket knife goes with me. It goes with me. Several things that I, I, I take with me. I have, um, uh, when I come home, everything comes out of my pockets and goes right into a spe uh, specific place, all within a general area. Got a bowl that we keep. Anybody got a bowl that you keep your keys in? Got a bowl that we keep our keys in. Um, some people, they're fancy and they have key hangers, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, a bowl, we throw our keys in there and, and I get up every morning and the wallet goes in my pocket and the knife goes in my pocket and uh, uh, whatever I need for the day, keys to the semi-truck, excuse me, uh, or whatever, whatever I know that I'm going, I, that goes with me. Why are you going to go to church without your Bible? Go to church without a Bible? Come on now. Bring your Bible to church. Read it. Open it. Uh, listen to it. Take your Bible to church. Take your Bible to church. Uh, don't ever leave it at home again. Make a New Year's resolution for yourself. I'm going to bring my Bible to church. I'm bringing my Bible to church. Now, stir up the basics. Stir up repentance and stir up the basics. Stir up the basics. Now, the basics, the basics are, we've been doing them. You wouldn't know any, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know um, uh, uh, the basics were the basics until we did something different. You would say, well, what are the basics? Well, here's a basic for you. Songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Last thing I want my church sounding like is some, is some, is some uh, cowboy bar, some honky-tonk, some, some uh, uh, rock band, some, some concert somewhere, some hip-hop show. The last thing I want my church sounding like is the world. The, even the world makes a mock at churches who look like them, copycats. We're the basics. We teach the Bible. We preach the Bible. We tell people the gospel. We sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs. And that's not enough for some people. Some people want the flair. Some people want the, the rock band stuff. Okay, good. Then you fit in at that church. You wouldn't fit in here. And God has not outfitted you for this church. I talked to um, uh, a friend of mine downtown, Brad and Chelsea McKee, and we were talking. I've said, mentioned this before. And um, I talked about, uh, we were talking, he was talking about how to market you know, attract people to his, 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 uh, his gym and whatnot. And he said, look, he said, I don't want everybody coming to my gym. Not everybody fits my gym. He said, I don't need some gold's gym meathead in here who thinks he can lift all the weights at once. I want somebody who's going to follow the program. I want somebody who's going to follow the program. And he told me, he's like, so, he's like, it's the same thing. Jay, you don't want everybody at your church. I didn't say it. He did. He said, you don't want everybody at your church. Some know-it-all religious person who thinks they have it all. Things that no one, he says, you want somebody who's con going to conform to the image. And he didn't say this. This is my thought. Somebody who's going to conform to the image of Christ. He said, you want somebody who's going to follow the program. What if you had somebody coming? What if I went into to Brad's gym downtown, Velocity Barbell, and I said, um, uh, hey, Brad, I know you got a whole program here, but, you know, I found this one. This one seems to suit me better. All right, well, then go and do that program. But you're not doing it here. Go, go to that gym and do it there. Oh, well, I'm not trying to convert his place. I said, hey, that's something that I was looking for, and I found it. I want God to direct the paths of people who are looking for him, and I want him to be found here. I want him to be found in this word. I want people who are going to follow the program of the Bible. 
That's what it's all about. Some people have stuck around long enough to go, oh, we like this program, we like this program, we like, oh, we don't like this program. Folks, so you, treasure's in a field, Brother Alex, so you're gonna throw out the, all the treasure and the whole field because it's got some tumbleweeds in it, because it's got some thistles and thorns in it. A whole lot of people condemn an entire restaurant because of what they ordered off the menu. That's, on, that's foolishness. That's, it's silly to me. So our church is going to stay by the basics, but we've also got to stir up the basics. Stir up the basics. Songs and hymns and spiritual songs are exciting. They're exciting. How firm a foundation? Oh, please, you can keep your newsboys. I'll take that. You can keep your casting crowns. I'll take that. You know, listen, I'm sure they mean well and all that stuff, but that's, let somebody else listen to that. I'll take, I'll take how firm a foundation. I'll take, I'll take a victory in Jesus. I'll take it as it's written. I'll take those things. And, and they may say, well, that's, that's your flavor. All right, it's my favor, but I promise you when we get to heaven, we're not rock banding out for Jesus. We're not doing it. We're not going to have some Led Zeppelin lookalike on a, on a, on, on, or an ACD cover band in heaven rocking out for Jesus. We're not doing it. We're not going to jump around the stage. We're not going to roll around. We're not going to shred a guitar or, or um, I don't know what the verbiage would be uh, um, for uh, jamming on some, uh, some drums. But uh, we're, not, we're, not, we're not rocking and rolling for Jesus. And we, we, we've hit that point and we're moving on. Uh, stir us up to the basics. Stir us up to the basics. We've got to stay to the basics. Folks, there's a winning recipe and it's spelled basics. <laughs> it's the basics. That won't change. God's laid it out. We stick to it. God will, God will see us through. We need to be stirred up to repentance. We need to be stirred up to the basics. And then lastly, number three, what happens when we get stirred up to repentance and stirred up to the basics, is the next natural thing to happen is a stirring up to revival. Revival. I don't, my personal belief is, is America is, is modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, there, are, there are, it's no longer, it's no longer the thing to stay in the closet, it's now come out and be proud about it because there are millions of people backing you up and go all for it. We have people in our country, we, they're groomers is what they are, uh, and they're grooming the next generation to be um, totally cool with that lifestyle. That lifestyle is an abomination to God. Um, folks, I don't hate anybody, but I hate the thing that is leading them away. I, I, don't, I don't hate them. I don't hate them. Uh, I wish that they would get right with God. I wish that they would repent. There's that big R word that everybody's afraid of. Oh, we just sang it this morning. Then I was pardoned of my sin. I always turn to Miss Jennifer and say, then I repented of my sin. <laughs> uh, there's a story behind that, but for another day. Uh, repent of their sin, not sins. I didn't say plural, their sin. Their sin is a belief in anything but Jesus Christ. Their, 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 their atheism, uh, agnosticism, um, deism, uh, whatever it may be. If you believe something other than I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man comes to the Father but by me, then you're dying and going to hell. You say, oh, that stirs me to anger. Oh, well, let God be true and every man a liar. You just call me a liar? Yeah, and God's true. Yeah, you're a low-down, dirty, rotten, stinking liar if you believe anything other than Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. No man, not you, not your mama, not your daddy, not your, not your grandma, not your kids, not the president, not, uh, not your idol, not LeBron James or Beyonce or Elon Musk or Warren Buffett or anybody else or these fools who run that World Economic Forum, not a one of these suckers, they're not the way. It's not in robotics, it's not in cryogenics, it's not in longevity, it's not in, I believe Jeff Bezos was beginning to fund, um, uh, I could be wrong, I, I might be wrong on this, but uh, on the Jeff Bezos part, but the funding that goes into how to, how to make mankind live forever. You're not going to do it. 
It's already been done by I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. You can't get there any other way. It's only Jesus. So swallow that bitter pill, you antichrist. Jesus is the way. Like it or lump it. And if you like it, you won't ever have to lump it. And if you go ahead and lump it, you'll take that lump to the depths of hell forever. Stir us up to revival. What is revival? It means to be made alive. Made alive again. If I was alive and I died and I was revived, that is revival. A lot of Christians are dead today. They're dead in their doing nothingness. They're dead in their complacency. They're dead in their apathy. They're dead in their, their um, uh, caught up with the, with the allurements of the world. We need to be revived. Folks, revivals aren't for lost people, even though it draws lost people. Revivals are for born-again Christians to get right with God and to do what was right. A revival also reaches the ears of the lost. You can't have a bunch of Christians getting right with God and people staying lost. You will never find in Scripture a time where people getting right with God and others not getting to know him. Go to Nineveh. Go to Nineveh. Jo Jonah went there and preached the gospel, but he also reminded them, hey, this is who you are. This is what it's all about. And what do they do? They, re they, they revived and the whole city got saved because the king went and sat in sackcloth and ashes and ripped his clothes apart and said, oh man, the whole city has got to repent. And they fasted and prayed and everybody got saved. It's happened time and time and time again, over and over and over again. Uh, uh, let me find it. Um, Dad, you, I know you've heard of him. Dr. Paul Hazy, uh, uh, Mordecai Ham. Mordecai Ham, it says that at, uh, uh, at one point, Mordecai Ham, he went to speak at um, uh, a, a great revival, and, and he, he was there for actually a couple of months. And during this revival, he never gave an invitation. Never had an invitation. Never had an invitation. Weeks went by for, for three months. No invitation. No invitation. And the people that put it on said, Mr. Ham, Brother Ham, we got to have a revival. Why aren't we having a revival? And he said, I'm not having a revival until I think that God has stirred the hearts of the people. He said, so I'm going to preach hotter and hotter every single time. Every time I'm going to lay it on thick. I'm going to do the best I can. And after several weeks, he had, a, he had an invitation, and it says thousands and thousands and thousands of people came. People getting right with God and people getting saved. There's no way that Three Rivers Baptist Church could have a revival and your next-door neighbor wouldn't get saved and your coworker wouldn't get saved and your mom and your dad or your brother or your sister or whoever in your life and in your circle wouldn't at least hear the gospel and people come to Christ. God can stir us up. I don't know how many years we have left on this earth as a whole, let alone myself. But let's say the world, let's say Jesus is coming back in 20 years. Let's say it's 20 years. We could have a little mini revival at Three Years Baptist Church for the next 20 years. I mean, why do we have to be a dead church when Jesus comes back? We don't have to be. The bride's got to be getting ready. Let's be doing our part. But we can never, ever reach revival. The tears will never be shed. The reunion will never be brought together. The, the neighbor will never be saved. The, the family member will never meet Christ. That will never, ever happen if we don't first get stirred up to repentance over our cold hearts. Our cold hearts are doing, I, I'm not real bad. Okay, cool, but are you real good? Well, no. So you're in the middle, and what does the Bible, what does God say about the middle? Pfft. Pfft. I'm gonna spew you out of your mouth, spew you out of my mouth. Man, I don't, I don't wanna be that guy. And I struggle with it. Sometimes I'm cold, and sometimes I'm real hot. And sometimes I'm real cold, and sometimes I'm just hot. What I struggle with is not being hot and cold. That's being human. I struggle with being in the middle because that's comfortable. I read my Bible enough. I passed out a couple of tracks. But down inside, I know that's not good enough. I know that, there, that I could do more. I know. I was just playing the game. 
And one day we'll be called to the carpet. And God would say, you were just playing the game, weren't you? And we'll head our head, hang our heads in shame. We can't lie to him. <laughs> There's no lying then. Yeah, God. I know I should have done more. See, it is paramount that sermons that bother us and stir us and brush us and push us and move us have to be preached. They have to be because it holds the preacher accountable and it holds the people accountable to a God who holds us accountable because he's given us his word. He said, I've given it to you, people who make up Three Rivers Baptist Church. You can keep it closed, but you're still accountable. You can turn away from it, but you're still accountable. You know what gets me about wayward people? Is they're still accountable. They're still accountable. Just because you're out living your life and doing what you want to do, it, you're still accountable. So I credit it to you. You're in church this morning. You're in church tonight. You've, you've uh, taught a Sunday school class. You sang in the, in the choir and, and um, uh, you tied. You went out soul winning yesterday. I credit it to you. But don't, don't stop there. If you say, I don't ever want to stop then stir up to repentance, stir up the basics, stir up the basics, and we may be able to stir up a revival. A stir up a revival. There are people here who haven't been here for years, and I'm not, oh, I want to have a great church so they can come back. They haven't come back or not, but there's a city of over 300,000 people. Hey, there, and I'm not going to name names, not to be mean, but they're, they're, the names could just go on and on. Here you go. In Fort Wayne, there's another Jake Jackson. There's another Jim. There's another Dr. and Mrs. Poe. Well, there are no other Dr. and Mrs. Poe. So you guys are the one and only. Nobody, I guarantee nobody in Fort Wayne's been serving in children's ministry for 50 years. I bet you guys are a, few, a rare, rare breed. Um, uh, there's another Dr. and Mrs. Poe. There's another, Lord help us, another Arif and Carey. Uh, there's another, there's, there's another Jesse. There's another... Jennifer, there's another Hillary, there's another Alex, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's you. There are more of you out there. So it's not, let's get three of us going so our old friends come come back. Sure, if that's what God's will is, but let's stir it up so we can go out and find all the ones who have not heard of Jesus. Let's go find all the ones who've never heard the gospel plain before and give it to them straight and let them, kind, let them come and find an authentic place with an authentic Savior, with an authentic book, with authentic songs, praising an authentic Savior Amen. where they can worship and fellowship and disciple and turn their lives around instead of putting their necks in a noose, instead of putting blades to their wrists, instead of popping pills, instead of putting a gun to their, their, uh, uh, their head. Instead of just ending it all, they can find a new beginning by ending the old life and beginning a new life with that new birth in Christ. That's what I want to be a part. That's what we're going to make around here. We are going to cultivate that again. We are going to push toward that goal again together. And if you don't want to do it, then, then um, uh, hop off the wagon and walk behind everybody. Don't, uh, everybody's going to carry some weight. Uh, I had half the church up there this morning in <laughs> the department meeting. I'm like, yeah, this is going to be great. Um, uh, but everybody's going to have a place. You have a purpose. Right now, I don't care if you sit on a pew for the next year, you'll find a place. There'll be a place for you, and you can serve the Lord by stirring up. The Bible said, stir up the gift that is in you. You said, oh, I don't have a gift. no. It didn't, it didn't put a picture in the Bible and with a picture with your face on there that said, besides this guy. Stir up the gift that is in you besides angel. No, angel has a gift. I mean, come on, he's an angel. Uh, he's angel. Angel has a gift. Miss Hillary has a gift. Miss Jamie has a gift. Bill has a gift. He said, stir up the gift that is in you. There's a gift in you. Let's find out what it is. By repentance, by the basics, and by revival. Would you bow your head and close your eyes with me, please? 
I'm going to ask you to stay in your seat. And I want you to go with me in prayer for just a moment as we pray for our church, the future of our church, the families of our church, that God would help people to see their gift. And then, folks, I would ask you, this is a personal one, that you'd pray for your pastor. Please pray for your pastor for guidance and wisdom to know how to lead and to teach and preach God's people. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for the letters that Paul sent to Timothy where he said, hey, Timothy, stir up the gift that is in you. And Lord, I have a gift in me. These people here tonight have a gift in them. Our Sunday morning crowd, they have a gift. And Wednesday and Sunday, they all have a gift. Even these little kids, these little children who come to Three Rivers Baptist Church, they all have gifts. They may not know what they are yet, but Lord, they have a gift. Lord, I'd ask that you would help us as a church tonight to find those gifts and to use them to help the body of Christ to help build the church. So when that trumpet sounds and we're all caught up to meet him in the air, we can do it with expectancy, saying, yes, this is the moment I was waiting for. I'm so glad I served the Savior. I'm so glad I served the Lord. I can meet him with peace. I can meet him with confidence. I don't have to be ashamed. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you'd help these faithful people. Lord, give them strength this year. Give them health this year. Lord, I'd ask, I I know that this may be a lot to ask, and I know there's nothing too big to ask, but Lord, no setbacks for Three Rivers this year. I know that there'll be bumps in the roads, but Lord, uh, the last few years have been tough on everybody. Everybody. Not just three rivers, but I mean everybody. And Lord, somebody who's here who's not a soul winner, Lord, help us to make them a soul winner. Somebody here who's never read their Bible through, Lord, help them to do it this year. People who have never said, led anybody to the Lord before, let this be the year. Oh, God, let a great harvest come in this year. A, a great harvest be, be sown and expect a great one to be reaped. Oh, Heavenly Father, give us health. Give us the wealth that we need. Prosper us, Heavenly Father, as we work for you and be good stewards for you. Lord, I'd ask that you'd help us this new year as we bring it to a close and we go out tomorrow and and kick it into drive like usual. Lord, help us to be a blessing and to be blessed. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Miss Jennifer, we're dismissed. (laughs) 